Hi everyone, my name is John Griffith and I am a Systems and Applications Engineer at Texas Instruments in the Interface Products business. Today I will be talking about Ground Noise Transient Immunity, or GNTI for short, why it is an important consideration for system designers and how this relates to our isolation products. I will be demonstrating how we perform the GNTI test in the lab and then show some typical results with TI's latest family of high performance reinforced digital isolators. GNTI is a test that TI performs to further evaluate the data integrity of our isolation devices across a large range of frequencies. If you are familiar with the Common Mode Transient Immunity Test, or CMTI for short, which is performed on all isolators, GNTI is similar. Both of these tests create a varying voltage potential across the isolation barrier of the device while monitoring the outputs of the data channels to test the overall immunity of the device. CMTI places a repeating trapezoidal voltage waveform between the two grounds at a rate of 10 kHz. We know that the FFT of a trapezoidal waveform contains frequency components at the odd harmonics of the repetition frequency whose amplitude rolls off at 20 dB per decade. As you can see, with the given rise time, fall time, and repetition rate, the device is only being subjected to a discrete number of fixed frequency components that roll off significantly in amplitude well before 100 MHz. As common sense would indicate, transient events in the real world can occur at any given frequency and not just at the small subset of frequencies that CMTI tests. To fill this gap and better understand the performance of our devices over a much broader range of frequencies, we have begun testing our digital isolators using this GNTI method in addition to the CMTI method. It is important to understand if our digital isolators is susceptible to specific frequency ranges which can arise from the broad range of applications these devices are used in, including motor drivers, high-speed inverters, and essentially anything that needs isolation. Let's first go over the system block diagram showing everything from a high level. Going from left to right, the first part of the system is a floating battery pack that is used to power the VCC1 side of the isolator. Then we have a function generator whose output is reference to earth that is used to generate the test signal that is transmitted across the isolator. Next, there is a noise signal that is injected between the two grounds that we refer to as the GNTI signal. Moving to the right hand side of the block diagram, we have an oscilloscope whose inputs are left floating with respect to ground that is used to monitor the data integrity of the isolator. Lastly, there is a second battery pack that is used to power the VCC2 side of the isolation barrier. Now let's look at how the GNTI signal is produced by looking at some test equipment. The first piece of equipment that is needed is a signal generator responsible for generating the noise source across all frequencies that you intend to test. Since the signal generator is not capable of driving the needed power levels that we want to test, we then have a switch bank that is used to route the noise source to a series of amplifiers that are each only capable of properly amplifying the noise signal for a subset of the full frequency range. At the output of the amplifier is another switch bank that is used to route the output signal from any one of the amplifiers to the coupling network. This coupling network has a pass-through port that is used to route the signal from the last switch bank to the test board and two additional ports that are used to, for power meters to measure the forward power and reflected power in the test setup real time. This closes the control loop and allows you to monitor the power being applied to the test board real time and ensure that the desired power is always being applied at each amplitude step. The SMA connector on the test board that the GNTI signal is routed to has ground two connected to the center tap and ground one connected to the case. During this test, the digital output is monitored by the oscilloscope and compared to the mask to ensure that no glitches, DC offsets, missed bits, or undesired toggling occurs while being subjected to the GNTI signal. The tolerance of this mask can be programmatically changed with an independent time deviation tolerance and voltage deviation tolerance from the ideal output signal. The test program contains a loop of frequencies to be tested and a loop of amplitudes to test at each frequency. For each frequency, the test will step through the amplitudes until either a data failure occurs or the maximum amplitude is reached. Once either of these conditions occurs, the setup will move to the next frequency in the loop and begin testing at the lowest amplitude. Now let's look at some test results. 
The output of the test is a series of data points with corresponding frequency and power level. The power level can be converted to a corresponding voltage level since the setup has a known 50 ohm termination across the isolation barrier to prevent reflections. The amplitude represents the highest power level where the part did not exhibit a fault or the setup reached the maximum power level without a failure. If you take all of these data points and graph them, it will show you the device's immunity versus frequency. As you can see, the new ISO 7842 family of TI reinforced digital isolators are immune to high power levels across the isolation barrier across a wide range of frequencies. For example, at 400 megahertz, the device can handle 35 dBm of power. This corresponds to a RMS voltage of 12.5 volts and a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 35.35 volts. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. For more information about Texas Instruments isolation products, please visit us at ti.com slash ISO. Have a great day.